This PowerPoint will take you through the adaptation shown in the leaf to gas exchange. We will also go through some of the adaptations shown by plants to reduce their water loss. At the end of this first section you should be able to label the tissues of the leaf and state their function, describe the path of gases such as carbon dioxide and oxygen between the air and the palisade mesophyll cells of the leaf, and also to describe adaptations of the leaf to efficient gas exchange. So first of all, why do plants need specialised gas exchange surfaces? Well, as you can see, plants are very large multicellular organisms. As a result, they have a very small surface area to volume ratio. They also have a tough waterproof outer covering to limit water loss. Diffusion cannot take place across this tough waterproof outer covering. Therefore, overall, the diffusion rate would be too slow to meet the needs for the plant. Plants therefore have leaves as specialised gas exchange surfaces. So let's look inside the leaf in more detail. As you can see, the leaf is made up of a number of different tissues, each of which have a different function. The upper surface of the leaf is coated with a thick waxy cuticle to reduce water loss. Just beneath the waxy cuticle is a single layer of cells. This makes up the upper epidermis. These cells do not have chloroplasts so that light can pass straight through them to the palisade mesophyll. The layer of palisade mesophyll cells um, are where most photosynthesis happens. These cells are columnar and elongated and they are packed with lots and lots of chloroplasts. They're at the top surface of the leaf so that they can maximise the amount of light they can capture. Underneath this, the spongy mesophyll cells are more loosely packed. They have fewer chloroplasts because they get less light, but they have lots more air spaces to allow the diffusion of gases in and out of the leaf and around to the palisade mesophyll. The lower epidermis is a single layer of cells. This layer also contains guard cells. The guard cells surround a pore or stoma. The guard cells are able to open and close to allow gases to diffuse in and out of the leaf. The stoma is the hole or the pore that's formed when the guard cells are open. Finally, xylem vessels bring water to the leaf. This water is needed for the reactions of photosynthesis, but it's also very important in keeping cells turgid. So let's look at how the leaf is adapted for efficient gas exchange. First of all, for photosynthesis, it's really important that carbon dioxide is able to diffuse into the leaf because carbon dioxide is one of the reagents needed for photosynthesis. It's also important that the cells have a good supply of water. At night, when there's no light, oxygen will be needed for respiration and carbon dioxide will be produced as a waste product. Fick's law states that for efficient diffusion, there must be a large surface area, a short diffusion distance, and a large concentration gradient. As you can see, trees particularly have lots of leaves and this gives a large surface area for gas exchange. Each individual leaf is actually very thin and flat which means it has a large surface area and also because it's thin it gives a short diffusion distance. Many air spaces increase the surface area available for diffusion and also decrease the distance between the air and the palisade mesophyll cells. Also lots of stomata on the lower epidermis allow the, the diffusion of gases by increasing the surface area available. A concentration gradient is maintained by photosynthesis during the day which rapidly uses up carbon dioxide as it diffuses in so there is a low concentration of CO2 in the palisade mesophyll ensuring that there's a continual gradient between um, the mesophyll cells and the air and also air movements such as the wind continually replace and replenish fresh air around the leaves. The stomata are very important in controlling the amount of gases that can diffuse in and out of the leaf. At night, the stomata are closed. This is because water leaves the guard cells as it diffuses out by osmosis down a water potential gradient from the guard cell 
into the rest of the leaf. This makes the guard cells flaccid and the stomata close. In the day, however, light is used to make ATP. This ATP is used for active transport. Ions are pumped into the um, guard cells. This lowers the water potential inside the guard cell and water now moves into the guard cell by osmosis, making the guard cells swell up and as they swell up, they bend and this opens the stomata. With the stomata open, this allows carbon dioxide to diffuse into the leaf and be available for photosynthesis in the palisade mesophyll. One of the problems is that when the stomata are open, water can be lost by diffusion out of the leaf. This causes one of the problems with plants that are living in areas where there is not enough water. Plants that live in dry environments are called xerophytes. This is because they often have adaptations to conserving water. Dry environments don't just include deserts. They can also include areas like um, salt estuary areas or sand dunes um, and also areas where it's very cold because a lot of the water is trapped up in ice and is therefore not available to the plants. So what adaptations do different plants show? You're probably familiar with pine trees that live in cold arctic regions such as Christmas trees and these have very small leaves, they're often called needles. These small leaves reduce the surface area of the leaf they also have fewer stomata to reduce the rate of diffusion of water vapour from the leaf. Some plants have hairy leaves. These hairy leaves trap water vapour around the plant. This reduces the water potential gradient between the leaf and the air, so less water vapour is lost from the leaf. Some plants have an extra thick waxy cuticle. This forms a waterproof barrier which reduces the loss of water vapour from the leaf. Marum grass is a very popular xerophyte to be asked questions about in the exam. Marum grass lives on sand dunes. Now sand does not retain water well because any rainfall will just drain straight through. Also sea spray is very salty so the salty water is not easily taken up by osmosis. Marum grass therefore has quite a lot of adaptations to reduce water loss. The long thin grass leaves are rolled inwards with stomata on the inside and this helps trap water vapour inside and reduces the water potential gradient between the leaf and the air, meaning that less water is lost by evaporation. If you look inside the leaf, you actually see that the stomata that are on the inside have the stomata sunken in grooves or pits and this traps even more water vapour, again reducing the water potential gradient between the leaf and the air and meaning that less water is lost by evaporation. There are two other xerophytic adaptations that you can see in marrow grass. The first is it has a very thick waxy cuticle. Remember in an exam you must say thick waxy cuticle if you're talking about a xerophytic adaptation. This reduces evaporation from the surface of the leaf. Another adaptation is the hairs that you can see around the grooves inside the leaf and these hairs again trap water vapour um, preventing loss of water by eva evaporation. Let's look at some questions. Here they show you a section through a leaf. You can see it has a thick waxy cuticle and the first bit says explain how the cuticle reduces water loss. All you need to say here is that the cuticle is waterproof or impermeable to water. The second part asks you to explain how one of the other labelled parts reduces water loss. Now there's two things you could talk about here. The first of all you can see that there are hairs around the stomata and also that the stoma is actually sunken into a pit or groove. Whichever feature you choose, the reason why they help reduce water loss is the same. So either the hairs or the stomata in pits trap water vapour and reduce the water potential gradient so less water is lost by evaporation. You could also talk about the fact that the stomata can close and that this reduces water loss by evaporation as less water can diffuse out of the stomata of the leaf. A couple of other application questions. Why do grasses growing in salty, salty water have difficulty obtaining water? Here you should straight away be thinking about osmosis. Um, salty water will have a very low water potential 
meaning that it would be very difficult for water to move into the grass by osmosis. The pine trees are living in very cold environments. A lot of the water will be trapped in ice, therefore it won't be available to be taken up by osmosis. At the end of this section, you should now be able to describe a number of adaptations of xerophytes, at least six, and explain how they reduce water loss from the plant.